Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. Today we're going to review and demo a 60s Gibson Les Paul Standard. Now you might be saying, hey, didn't you already do one of these back in 2019 when they first came out? And the answer to that is yes. However, I'm curious, is this still just as good in the year 2022 as the year that it first came out? That is the big question today, and I thought, hey, Sweetwater has an exclusive finish, so I thought it'd be cool to check this out because Sweetwater is sponsoring tonight's episode. Now to be clear, Sweetwire sponsors two episodes per month on my channel, so they're a long-term partner with me, so they're just sponsoring this episode, not necessarily the whole review and demo. I bought this guitar with my own money, it's not a gift. All right, so first things first here. The smell is just the same as I remember. They've slightly started to get back to that lightly vanilla scent to it, like it had went away, but now it's like coming back. But I think the first thing to note is the cases have changed quite significantly from 2019. You used to have the Canadian made TKL cases, but then, you know, cases have been kind of hard to come by, so they have to, you know, go with any manufacturer that'll make it. If I had to guess, this might be one of the newer Canadian style or probably Costa Rican. It's actually pretty lightweight though, so I'm actually happy with that. Some of these cases can get quite heavy. But let's go ahead and see what exclusive finish Sweetwater has to offer us. It's a lemon burst. You know, it kind of reminds me of a, uh, there's like a model from 2016 that had something very similar to this, like 2016, 2018. I think they had called it Light Burst at that point in time. But I picked this one out for a few different reasons. A, it's got a pretty fantastic top to it, right? This is one of the AAA tops that you have to pay a $200 premium for. $2,899 versus the regular $2,699 price tag on these. And the other reason I went for this one is because it's ridiculously lightweight. That's why I like about Sweetwater's website is if you're buying a Les Paul Standard or really any guitar, I think it's like 800 plus, something like that. You can see the actual photos on their website and pick the one out that you like the best. So I was able to choose from four of these. However, sometimes if they have four on the website, if you just reach out to them, they might have additional ones for you to choose from. That's just a pro tip from my experience. Because I had initially stumbled upon this one during a Rock or Not episode that we were doing. It's like, oh, that's a nice one but by the time I decided I wanted to buy it it was gone but the one that replaced that one was just as nice if not even better so I thought yeah let's go ahead and pick this thing up. I will say I liked Lemon Burst better in the photos than I did in person it's almost a little bit too plain right here but it's an interesting new take with that red back but hey if this color isn't for you they also have other exclusive finishes in their lineup. Within the Les Paul Standard 60s, they have a Heritage Cherry Sunburst and the Lemon Burst that we're talking about today in the AAA tops. There's a 50 Standard in the Heritage Cherry Sunburst with the AAA top. They also have a Smokehouse Burst Les Paul Classic. We've unboxed those things on the show. Those are sweet. I love that finish. And then they also have two different colors in the Studio Plus lineup. You know, Flame Top Studios, what's not to like? Bourbon Burst and, once again, Heritage Cherry Sunburst. So if regular offerings don't excite you from Gibson, always check out your dealers because sometimes they get something a little bit more fancy and exclusive. But I'm noticing a few small differences between this and the first ones that we had reviewed. Our strap buttons have changed. We'll take a look at that on the workbench. That was just something I noticed because I always handle these guitars by the strap buttons. The interior of this one definitely feels like a Canadian made case to me. And yep, it is. Back to TKL Canada. As far as the case candy in 2022, we're getting a blank truss rod cover yet the standard Gibson strap, the new tinier pre-pack checklist, gone are those big blue pamphlets. We now have these little postcard things. And switch tip in the case so it doesn't break in transit. We still get our baby photo and inside our baggie, we get our premium polishing cloth, Gibson owner's manual and our multi-tool. And if you buy from Sweetwater, you get their 55 point inspection where they just verify everything's working the way that it should be. Here's what all of that entails. I mean, besides making sure the guitar is okay and everything, one of the good things about Sweetwater is the fact that they double box everything if you're worried about the whole shipment process. It's perfectly acceptable to ship guitars just in that box. They just go a little bit above and beyond, almost to the point of excessive in my opinion, but hey, it got here safe, right? So to further our analysis here, let's go ahead and throw this on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Inside the 60 standard, the flame top really comes to life on the workbench. Let's take a look at our pickups here. So our neck pickup here is still the Burst Bucker 61, labeled as Rhythm 61, and then the bridge pickup is the lead variation, as you can see there. 
I suppose you could also use this video as like an update on quality control of Gibson. So far things have been seeming okay, but we're definitely getting back to some Henry J era type stuff. You see what just came out of that pickup cavity? That's a loose wood shaving. When I first got this guitar and was handling it for a little bit, I heard stuff rattling on the inside. This is all the wood shavings that was still in the control cavity right here. That's a little bit of a shame. At the end of the day, is it a big deal? No, you just unscrew it, knock it all out, and then you're good to go. But they could have done that at the factory too. Maybe it got loose as it was like shipping and whatnot. But as you can see, there's still some in there. But it's LM for lemon burst. And then we've got some painted over tape here that we can remove to see that. That almost looks like it might say something like plus top. I'm not sure. Maybe the workers mark the really nice ones because when these things were first introduced, this was like the standard. Well, maybe not quite this nice, but a lot of them were quite nice. But now the ones that you look at at most dealers' websites, they're just pretty basic looking, which I don't think I can really blame Gibson for. If you've got nice wood, you might as well get a premium for it. Now we have this in our bridge pickup cavity. Les Paul Standard 60s and then Sweetwater Exclusive then 20. As far as the cavities themselves, they look fairly cleanly routed, in the pickup routes anyway. And it's like a lemon meringue pie cross section right here. You get the mahogany crust with the yellow filling, and then a little bit of buffing compound for your whipped cream. So still a two-piece maple top with a solid mahogany body on these. So that all still checks out, but where things have changed are our bridge. If you actually go to Gibson's website, they say, we reserve the right to make any changes at any time without notice. This is what they're talking about. If I remember correctly, it was about a year after these things were introduced, they swapped over to this new style of bridge. Now it's still technically an ABR1 as far as the actual bridge system itself, but it's still mounted just like a Nashville style bridge with a stud in the body. But what changed are the posts themselves. They used to be solid, but now they have a hole because you can now use an Allen key to adjust the action. So you can go up and down without having to use the thumb wheels. That is a great upgrade. It might not look like a 50s burst anymore, but let's face it, at the end of the day, this is a modern day player's guitar. Having a modern feature like that is a welcome addition. And the tailpiece is lightweight aluminum created by Advanced Plating Incorporated. So far, not too many changes. Three-way toggle switch like normal. We'll just take a second to appreciate this flame maple top. Definitely a nice heavy flamed one. And we still have two individual volumes and tone controls. And we'll take a look at those on the backside here in a minute, but let's go ahead and get our pickup ratings while we're there. So bridge pickup 7.85k ohms, our neck position looking at about the same 7.79, and then the middle position just for fun, about half that at 3.91. Then in my opinion, I think this looks better as a pick guard off version. I really wish dealer exclusives would actually just not ship with a pick guard at all because I mean, you're paying for the super flame top. I think a lot of people would prefer not to have the pick guard installed from the factory, but these ones do have the screw holes for it and they do ship with them installed. I mean, it looks good either way. It just depends. Are you pick guard on or off type person? Some people like the option to not have the holes in the top that they do want to take it off. This is kind of a nitpick thing. They didn't quite get the protective coating sticker all the way centered right there and it doesn't look like this was tightened up but this is another thing that they changed if you remember in my initial review i had complained that my brand new guitar had a big ding on the front because the pick guard rests against that that is a big problem that les pauls have i think it was about four to six months in they started to use this felt pad right there now sometimes you have to worry about the felt pad reacting to the finish but i think they finally found one that definitely does not have any effect as of right now anyway But moving on from the body, we've got the neck. So mahogany neck with a rosewood fretboard. Nothing's changed there. As per usual, when you get these things brand new, they are pretty dried out just because of the whole build process. So you want to condition it to darken them up. This time I used some Gibson branded fretboard conditioner that I got from Japan. It was actually from when I bought the 125th anniversary Les Paul. They had sent a little care kit with that because that was an expensive guitar. To be honest though, I still prefer the Dunlop 65. But it does appear Gibson's getting better with the whole tooling mark situation. There's nothing that's overly obvious to me. However, when you really zoom in, yes, you can still see some chatter marks right here. Not as bad as they were, but then again, you know, it also varies example to example. That's just something to kind of expect on a brand new Gibson. But we've got the 24 3 quarter inch scale length with a nut width of 1.7 inches. That increases to 2.09 by the 12th. With a first fret neck depth of 0.84, and that increases to 0.95 by the 12th. This is a 60 slim neck profile. But again, like we were talking earlier, they also have 50s versions. 
As far as the nut goes, everything's looking okay there. Maybe not quite as shaped as Gibson used to do. It feels a little bit more squared off. And that's what our truss rod looks like and our Gibson logo up here with the Les Paul model silkscreen. And this version has the Grover tuners. Now we move on to the back side. Remember how I said the pickup cavities were clean? Unfortunately, the backside cavity is not as clean. You guys remember the beardy beardies that we saw all the time in the Henry J era? Yeah, they have returned. The results of dull router bits and or just not taking the time to clean it up. I mean, it's a minor thing. Does it affect playability? No, but it's, you know, attention to detail. As far as our pots, still for Gibson branded ones, you've got the orange drop capacitors. For all intents and purposes, this is all the same, yeah. And here's what our toggle switch cavity looks like. It's in better shape than the other one. The back's in decent shape, got a few polishing scratches and whatnot around the edges and on the back. But here you can see just how flat these new strap buttons are. I wonder if that's to help them grip, because there's like the big giant ones that are the dome tops that Gibson started to use around 2014. And then there's like the regular style that's a little bit more rounded. So I think this is just like the regular style, but it's more flat at the top to hold onto your strap. So it's like a hybrid between the two. That's something very new. I haven't seen that before. But I was a little bit disappointed to see this. It's like a, a scuff mark or something. That was like that straight out of the case. I wonder if it's happening because the lacquer is too soft and they put it in the case and it just kind of scuffs it afterwards. And it's a little bit hard to see, but you do still have the thin binding in the cutaway here. And then checking the end grain on the sides. It looks like it's a two piece back to me, but it certainly plays the part of one piece very well. Now, additionally to the scuff on the side of the guitar, I also found a scratch right here on my back plate. Again, not that big of a deal, but brand new guitar. I also found a few on the toggle switch right there, but I'd definitely say these are the deepest ones. Then we can move up the back side of the neck. If you can see it through all the reflections, there's like a couple of light scuffs on the neck on this one too. So maybe that has to do something with the case once again, kind of like what we were talking about on the edges. Now these are way, 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 way more minor. And maybe they'll actually just polish out, I'm not sure. But the serial number on this one dates it to the 55th day of 2022. Production number 34, which means it was the 35th neck stamped on that particular day. Made in USA with Grover tuners. All said and done though, this is why I bought this one. That's ridiculously lightweight for a solid body Les Paul standard outside of the custom shop. Eight pounds, 9.2 ounces. So eight and a half pounds. Good luck finding a lighter one than that. <laughs> Let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how it sounds. go the 61 PAFs they sound nice they're very punchy sounding especially that neck pickup bridge pickup nice and bitey and obviously the middle position just in between all that Let's try it with a little bit of dirt.
Now that we know all about the 60s Les Paul standard in the AAA top, what are my final thoughts on this thing? Is it still worth buying one of these things brand new in 2022? I've got to say, I actually had just as much fun on this thing as I did the first one, and that's saying a lot because I have very fond, semi-what nostalgic feelings for the original release under the new ownership of Gibson. That was a big time in Gibson history. And seeing these things brand new at Sweetwater at that time, I actually went to the shop and bought it. They just look so phenomenal as compared to what we had been seeing for so long. But now that these things have been out for like almost four years now, I'll be honest, when I first opened the case, I wasn't as in love with it as I was in the beginning because we've seen these things in like the mod collection and demo shop so much and other reviews and demos it's kind of lost its luster as far as that goes however this one just kept inspiring me to play a whole bunch of different stuff I really enjoyed the pickups in here so as far as the QC goes it seems to be about relatively the same a little worse but a little bit better here and there it just kind of depends on example to example I think but it is a fantastic Les Paul. I thoroughly enjoyed myself. However, the biggest difference in 2022 is the fact that there's so many used ones out there right now too. So you've got a plethora of options between getting one that has been lightly played a little bit for a significant discount versus having to necessarily buy brand new. Now, if you're looking for one of the exclusive finishes like this one from Sweetwater, yeah, you're pretty much forced to buy brand new unless you can find one in the demo shop or somebody selling their used one. But let's face it, these things are beautiful. I don't think you'll find too many of these on the used market. So, Drawing Lights, I hope you enjoyed checking out the 60s Les Paul Standard with me today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. As always, if you're interested in being the next owner of one of these demo guitars, you can check them out on my website, troglysguitarshow.com. There's some links in the description.